So you're probably asking yourself how a handsome devil like me ended up in a place like this with you, right? All right. I'll tell you the whole story, but I warn you, it ain't pretty. May seem hard to believe, but these chiseled good looks have seen a whole lot of ugly. So I guess I'd have to start with the book. Legend has it that it was written by the Dark Ones. Necronomicon Ex Mortis, roughly translated, The Book of the Dead. About twenty-some-odd years ago, Professor Nobi unearthed the book at Castle Kandar and accidentally unleashed the Deadites in the woods outside Dearborn. That's when I got involved. To make a long story short, I was sent to hell and back, and then back again. And again. But enough about that, let's talk some more about me. Like for example, how did I end up here? Well, I guess you could say it all started with a woman. A woman in that godforsaken book. Welcome, true believers, to another chilling episode of Mysteries of the Occult. I'm Trisha Pettywood, your guide into the realms of shadow and the arcane. Joining me tonight is parapsychologist and best-selling author, Professor Alex Eldridge, author of the critically acclaimed Necronomicon. Welcome, Professor. Thank you, Trisha. It's truly an honor to be here in the very town where my late colleague, Professor Nobi, began his career. <laughs> oh, the honor is all mine. Your brilliant modern translation of this ancient text has set the world on fire. I'm told there's even a film in the works. <clears throat> oh, please. That hack wouldn't know the real Necronomicon from a roll of extra fluffy two-ply. Here, this one's on me. I'm awful sorry about Jenny. Tonight would have been ten years, right? Oh yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Chief. You're a real pal for throwing some margarita salt on the wound there. Perhaps you'd like to poke me in the eye with an umbrella and straw while you're at it. And what local Dearborn man that claims the Necronomicon has the power to raise the dead, or even travel interdimensionally through time? While it's easy to get caught up in the mythology behind the book, I'm afraid that sort of thing is just the sad, depraved ramblings of a lunatic. The real power of the Necronomicon lies not in the incantations, but in the poetry. Do you hear that? The guy called me a lunatic. Can you believe that? You want to see a lunatic, buddy? Why don't you come on down here and I'll show you a whole bottle full of lunatic. Oh, absolutely fascinating, Professor. We may never know what really happened in that cabin in the woods, but perhaps tonight we can finally shed some light on this famous local mystery. There I was, face to face with the mother of all ugly. So I say, come get some, and blam, no more Mr. Nasty Face. Thanks to my investigative work into the Noby case, I've managed to uncover this amazing piece of evidence. Here in my hand is the last known tape of Professor Noby, recorded the very night of his disappearance. But then it went bad. My hand, my own hand, it grabs the knife and I... In a Mysteries of the Occult exclusive, we're going to play the tape live in studio. Huh? Oh, I can hardly no. wait. Wait. What the hell are you doing? Don't play it. Don't play that... Taste dropper. Mantos Nosferatus. Mine a double. When you've just emptied both barrels of a shotgun into your favorite bartender, you can pretty much bet that happy hour is over. I went outside to see just how bad the situation was. It was bad. 
Past experience told me it would get a whole lot worse unless someone hit the deadites where it hurt. And seeing as how the TV station was their shortcut into this world, I figured that was a pretty good place to start. But first, I had to find more weapons. My trusty boomstick was almost empty. Kids these days, huh? What are those things? They're everywhere! It's like all hell broke loose! Oh, gee. Do you think? Say, you mind telling me where I can find some more ammo for the old double barrel? I'm just a rookie. They don't give us a shotgun until our second year. I'm pretty good with the sidearm, though. Stick with me and we should be okay. Oh, great. An optimist with a gun. Seconds. Does your m say, Bub? Is there another way in here? Oh uh, yeah. Well, the boss has the key, but he didn't show up for work yet. You know, the guys from the day shift should have clocked out by now. But there have been some freaky noises coming out of there. I sure hope nothing bad's happened to him. Uh, sorry, pal. Sounds to me like your coworkers are playing footsie with the forces of hell right about now. But I'll keep an eye out for your boss, though. Put in a good word for you. Well, the gates are locked. There go your precious bodily fluids. Hey, Captain, you boys having a little R&R, &R, I see, huh? Dusting the girls for fingerprints, are you? Funny man. Those things in the yard have taken over the strip club, along with pretty much the whole town. As long as they stay in there, we hold these positions. Which means unless you're a cop, you can just turn right around. Now relax, I'm on the job, see? Working vice. Deep undercover, you get me? You got a badge to back that up? A badge? Uh, uh, oh, sure, yeah, I'm a cop. I got a badge, right? Only I don't carry it when I'm working on a case, you know. Uh, no badge, no go. Clear? Crystal. I'll be right back.